Welcome. I'm going to talk about pedal boards. I'm going to talk about the Dario Expand pedal board. And when they came out with that, they asked me, do you want to make a video? And I said, well, yeah, but I'm going to have to bitch about the price. And then they, well, didn't quite want me to make a video. But I needed a board uh, for a certain a thing that then fell through. And I said, can you send me one? Because I love the idea. And uh, they did. So I'm not charging them for this video, but I'm free to say what I want. And when we did 42 Gear Street, Sweetwater sent a expand, but the little one for the Sweetwater uh, Sweet Sabotage Challenge. And we could see in those videos how extremely useful an expandable pedal board is. I've been pitching this concept of modular boards or expandable boards to certain companies for years. And I'm uh, not to Dario, but I'm happy that someone finally did it. So the idea is you have your board, especially with the little one, especially with the little one. It makes quite a bit of sense. You have your board right here and that's a little nice fly rig and you put your probably up to four pedals on this. But then on another night, you want your rotary pedal. Well, what are you going to do? You unclip this and you pull it out almost twice as big. Oh, you don't need this. You do this. Bam. And then you have an absolutely super sturdy longer version of the board. You can't really put pedals here because there's a little bit of a, you know, step. That's fine. Pedal here, pedal there. Um, comes with these cable feeders. Uh, I think there's actually one more. When I got them, and I put them together. I was extremely impressed with the craftsmanship. Actually, I'm lying. I saw them in... The dog's like, no, you, no, you, that's not true. <laughs> when I saw them in Padua in Italy, that's when my brain went, ah, this is a different kind of level in terms of quality. And it is. Um, it just feels very highly engineered. You can get the back feet higher or lower very easily. It's just really well done and the mechanism is well done. And when you put it together, and I have a video of this, you can see that the mechanism is highly engineered. This isn't some, I'm going to say, this isn't some crap from some OEM company. This is the Dario fucking quality. And that's what you pay for. These are almost as expensive as buying a short one and a long one from Pedal Train. Then then you're gonna say, well, what's what's the point? Well, I think the point is you don't have to completely rebuild your board. You just do whatever you need for the situation. Okay. Let's quickly look at a couple of clips from that Sweetwater challenge and see if people use different lengths for different boards. Especially for a fly rig, this is way cool. Now, there is a case for the small one, which I don't have. But obviously, the case needs to be the, the long length, which is cool because when you're having it short, you can put extra stuff in there, you know, clothing, toothpicks, whatever, whatever you want. Build quality is extremely high. But we're looking actually at the big one, which is where I, I kind of lost it in terms of, wait a second, that's the pricing. The pricing for the board isn't so bad. It's the pricing for the case. Yeah, but then you get the case. Let's look at the board first. So you can see actually, I'm sorry, it's just me today, no Desi. It's in the middle. And so on the sides, they have these, you can, you can tailor the case any way you want, but the case is for the board in fully expanded form. I've got some stuff here, which we're going to look at. Um, but this is the board 
in its small form. And normal size board. We're going to have to see what, uh, how it accommodates power supplies underneath. Interestingly, underneath it is fully Velcroed. On top, it comes fully Velcroed, but also underneath. So the question is, can I get a power supply underneath? Because it looks like, hmm, I don't know, if I'm right here, maybe not. Definitely a Chox DC7, which is what I would use anyway. Again, also the feet, uh, feet in the back that go up and down, but here are these two rails. Look how beautifully they're engineered and fit together. And then you just unclip it and check this out. All of a sudden, you got a fucking huge pedal board and you've got a case to go with it. The case itself, I think, is even almost even more than the board. But it is a freaking good case. So this is uh, where I got on their case and I said, look, um, you're really asking kind of prime uh, numbers here for the board and the case. But when you get it, you realize it is a prime product. Yes, you can actually buy a small and a big board, including a case from another company, but that's not the idea, okay? Th this is the idea. And look at the size of this freaking thing, but you make it the size that your setup requires. And then you have this and you got another row of pedals. And then instead of building a whole new board, buying the next board, do doing it all again, selling the old board, all you do is this, and there's another row of pedals. And your case grows with it because you can tailor that. But let's see how it comes because it's very environmentally friendly. Comes in all cardboard, small package. It doesn't come like that. You have to put it together. But that means more of them in one container and less energy and I don't know if that's what they were thinking, but that's what's happening. It's pretty cool. Let's put it together. Come 
takes a little bit but it is fun so they also i mean look at this case this is a serious handle there's of course a padded strap with it which you're gonna need when that's fully populated with pedals um beautifully <laughs> branded Dario red on it but subtle but they also send because i asked them their solderless patch cables and they send a whole bunch of them and the cool thing with these is they can be straight or angled each of them comes with a clipper i mean i had the planet waves ones planet waves was later bought by the dario and they are and i have loads of them but they have relatively big heads and you couldn't use them on a tight looper switcher now these are much smaller they're straight and they're angled with a good sized cable and I have enough of them here to hopefully do the board that I need to do. So we're gonna put the Costa Lab Labyrinth on there and we're gonna populate that board and see how it handles, how the whole thing, you know, works out. Cause that's how you test a board. We can look at it and I can stomp on it all good, but how does it actually look and feel when we're done? Uh, am I forgetting anything? Oh, these things. They also sent me these. The double pedal riser. And there's a single pedal riser. Um, not a bad idea for your... Comes with already pre-cut Velcro. That is nice. Or, I don't know, screw holes? I don't know what for. But that simply will go in the back row. Let's say that's my back row. Like this, so that the pedal comes up and you can still click it without hitting the pedal underneath and the same thing in a double pedal or for a wider pedal and let's see if we're going to need that for something but we might as well install it just to show you the functionality and that means for the next few hours i'm building a pedal board yay
So here we are. It uh, took quite a while. I stopped last night and finished the board now. I had a little bit of an issue with uh, MIDI because I didn't have MIDI cables long enough to go from the switcher to the Plethora X3. So what I did um, is use the WIDI jack, which is a little Bluetooth thing. And apparently it was connected the whole time and I spent half an hour trying to find out how to connect it. But MIDI switching beautifully. So a couple of things before we go into the board and what I found out. These cables are nice. The actual, I made a couple more. The actual plug is very nice and you can actually bend it to the side. It, it won't stay there. I mean, it's, you know, you really have to bend it and then wait a while. But you can go angled or straight without actually using different plugs. My friend Patrick um, just bought Evidence Audio and they're great cables. They're not as bendy as these. A little bit more work to put together, but great quality. But they all came in angled and he needed straight and spent seven bucks a plug to get the straight ones. And then he had all the angled ones lying around. This is a much better solution. And I'm going to venture against that bottom line. Same sound. I've, I've done tests. Nothing that the human ear can discern. So pretty good. But I highly recommend using a cable tester like this. These are not expensive. It's good to have these around. And then you can see these three connections are there. And then you know it works. You can also, of course, plug it in somewhere, go boop, 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 and check it. But having a cable tester is a good idea. It took me a while in the beginning to get the idea, open the screw, which then can fall out. Happened several times. One time I thought it fell in the trash can. He saw that in the video. I looked forever. And then uh, it was actually on the screwdriver, which is magnetic. So you open it, you shove it in, you wiggle it a tiny bit, not too much. That doesn't work. Tiny bit, screw it tight. Having a cable tester, however, is a good idea. So I could make all the cables I needed in the perfect length for the board. If you could see that in the beginning, I tested a bigger power supply. This is a Carl Martin DC factory. Um, could also stand in for a Zuma from Strymon. So something of this size will fit. You have to Velcro it. And I don't know if this Velcro wise would hold. Velcro it, maybe use a zip tie, you're good to go. However, I used a DC7, chained through to an 8. That's way too many outs now, but that's, that's the shit. So I would use that. Put it in the case. Now, as you could, if you could see, I put two pedals on the risers because it makes sense. It's behind the switcher, then you can still use your feet. But that means that they come up quite a bit higher. And we can actually see right here, there's a bulge. So you can close the case. And with the massive padding that it has, I think it's still safe. However, right here, I wouldn't want to bump the case. So since this is a soft case, and it's a very, very good one, trust me. Um, actually, I was going to say they need some kind of rubber. at the. Uh, it is different at the bottom. Good. Um, I wouldn't want to bump this on something, so you'd still want to carefully maneuver this. Maneuver? Because pedal board, cables, case, and everything that's on it, that is thousands of euro now. Any pedal board of that size is going to clock in at, I don't know, four or five grand, something like this easily. So the dividers I put in here, because now that the board is full size, it uses the four case. And there we go. I, I did some shots so you can see how beautifully small it is behind the switcher, how uh, nicely you can actually get the length of the cables right to get them perfectly in position. What I really, really like is the middle um, where I kind of have a highway of cables because these movable and adjustable I'm going to call them cable ties between the ribs of the board. Uh, you can put a line of cables on top and one at the bottom. And I have one, two, three, four here. I think there are more. I don't know where, where I put them. Um, but you can really nicely, without zip ties or anything, uh, stash the cables 
in that run, get them out again, I used very few uh, Velcro zip ties or Velcro cable ties. Um, I mean, if you care, I have the Freakout and Ricochet actually before the switcher because that is pitch and feedback stuff that comes right after the guitar and you will use momentaries anyway. Um, then Dynacomp, the Double Dreamer from Jam Pedals, the JHS Sweet Tea and the Gearbox. Gearbox wired up as two individual pedals in two individual loops. I still have a loop open. Then the Thermae before the effects loop, because why not? And then in the effects loop, or if I'm using the four cable method, which I don't have to, uh, the tonal recall, uh, going mono into the black hole, going out stereo back into the looper, and then in full stereo, the Plethora X3, which is connected with the CME WIDI jacks, so that I can send MIDI there, which gives me another three pedals, which is kind of cool. So, video on that soon. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. I did, however, just make it as big as I can and not really utilize the adjustability because what I did is I didn't make the board based on the pedals I have. I kind of pulled out the pedals to populate the board. That's not really what you do. You usually have a certain amount of pedals that you want to use and then you make the board the size that you need instead of saying, oh, this is the size of the board. Let's see what pedals I can put on that space. That is really not how it usually works. But I have to say, my previous criticism of the price point, this actually looks like it's splash water resistant. It looks like the stuff that uh, Mono uses uh, on the zippers. This is good. Yes, you could possibly buy two other boards, but the quality of the board, yeah. That's, that, that's working. Um, quick note on the cables again. I feel that the packaging, I know it is for stores and you have the nice packaging with the blister pack in the middle and everything is displayed and you can see the plugs and you can see this and you can see this. That's all good. But is it really necessary? Do we really need to display that in the store to Dario? I don't think many stores would even display that. Which leads to you buying five or six packs and having all these additional cutters, which you don't need, you need one. And having all these screwdrivers, which are just normal slitty ones. And these are really nice. I love the quality of the Dadari screwdrivers. I have a bunch of them. Now I have a shit ton more. So I feel and, and, and unboxing, it was like, okay, there's all this paper now and all these plastic things that they got to go in recycling. I feel like have one like that to display with a screwdriver and a cutter, but then have an OEM version where everything's literally in a paper envelope. Paper envelope, little cardboard box, um, and without the screwdriver and the cutter, you could really just have the plugs and the cable in a cardboard box like you're delivering the pedal board. All the stuff in the pedal board was actually just stuck in some paper uh, or cardboard, which I very much liked. I feel environmentally the solderless cables aren't great, Daria. I think you can rethink that and make it more cost efficient for you and just nicer for the environment. Um, talking about the screwdrivers, they have different thicknesses. And really, I think these, these two work. These are too thick. So you need to hit someone on the head in the factory that orders the screwdrivers because for those screws, these are a little bit too thick. They work with force and then you push and then you hurt your fingy like I did. Ouchie. So, um, to be honest, two out of five, bad. But I only need one. So maybe have an OEM version of the cables. It's cheaper for you 
it makes you look like an environmentally friendly company. So that is my experience with the expand pedal boards. Um, I actually very, very much like it. It's pretty highly engineered shit. And the price point, even though higher, I think is warranted. I didn't want to believe it. Didn't get paid for this video because I said, I'm going to say that people shouldn't buy it because it's too expensive. And, but now I'm changing my tune and I'm not getting paid. Damn it. But they just sent me a box of Accelerate, which you put on your guitar and then it's brand spanking new. It feels like it. So thank you, Dario, for that. I'm going to consider that payment. Um, thanks for watching. I hope that taught you something. If not, you're still here. And I put links below and I will put animals at the end as always. Yeah.